Last month, Rihanna was the halftime entertainment at the Super Bowl. Okay, stick with me here. This has a fashion history point, I promise. She reveals during her performance that she was pregnant with her second child. This is really big news for anybody interested in the history of maternity fashion, and I went on NPR to talk about it. Last time that Rihanna was pregnant, I wrote this article about why her maternity fashions were such a big deal for women everywhere. She cast aside tent dresses and stretchy pants and instead used fashion to embrace, display and celebrate her changing body. From crop tops and low-rise jeans to removing the lining of a Dior cocktail dress to transform it into a belly-celebrating outfit, Rihanna really radicalised maternity fashion. Now, this caused quite a lot of controversy. From corsets to baggy sweatshirts, women's waistlines have always been heavily monitored by society, and never more so than during pregnancy. Often, women's maternity wear does its best to conceal and accommodate pregnancy. Today, advice for expectant mothers can focus on techniques for disguising pregnancy or how to make the most of the pretty dull options available on the high street. Society has framed pregnancy as a liminal time for women, a moment of conversion from appealing womanhood to matronly motherhood. Fashion is central to how all of us construct our identities, yet maternity fashions are often rather uh, unexciting. But fashion history tells us a rather different story. Maternity wear has not always been a wasteland of leggings and baggy dresses. In fact, before the 19th century, the distinction between maternity fashion and just fashion was far more fluid. Without contraception, many women spent a much higher proportion of their lives in some stage of pregnancy. And stays and corsets were just worn around pregnancy. They were laced more open to accommodate a growing belly. They had different shaped stomachers for different parts of the pregnancy process. There are so many examples of maternity corsets from throughout the Georgian and Victorian eras, like these and these. Far from pulling in, distorting and contorting the body, these stays helped support the back and the bust and flexed around the woman's changing shape, whilst also allowing her to create a silhouette for the gowns worn on top. And those gowns were also probably the same gowns as she always wore, pinned a little bit more open with a different stomacher, a little bit looser to accommodate her belly. Pregnant women were also celebrated in portraiture. From the 1580s, pregnancy portraits grew increasingly popular. Marcus Gearhart's Woman in Red, painted in 1620, is a wonderful example of this trend. Rather than being hidden away, the impending arrival of an aristocratic heir was performed and celebrated on canvas and through fashion. But perhaps the most fabulous fashionable pregnancy trend was a 1793, yes, just one year, fashion to wear a false bump under your dress, known as a belly pad. Although the purpose of the belly pad has been disputed and some fashion historians disagree about whether it really was meant to imitate a pregnant belly, commentators at the time wrote about it as an imitator of pregnancy. In April 1793, a reporter in the Sun newspaper, different Sun, not that Sun, reported that, quote, Standing in a shop of one of my acquaintance, a genteel young lady came in and asked for a pad. The man asked her what size. She replied, about six months. Women throughout history have celebrated the power of the bump, but the Victorians shifted perceptions of how to dress for pregnancy. Specific garments for pregnancy, rather than those adaptations and repinnings of existing garments, were heavily commercialised in the 19th century. And these fashions were uh, often quite euphemistically named, 
So they're advertised as things like for the young matron or for the recently married lady, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. However, for many mothers, pregnancy was a dangerous time and it was often more feared than celebrated, especially in its early stages. This anxiety meant that pregnant women could lose freedom and agency over their bodies once their pregnancy was widely known. Once the pregnancy was visually evident, it could mean that a working Victorian mother could lose her job, that a genteel Victorian lady might be excluded from social events and confined to her home. So concealing pregnancy meant retaining independence. This 19th century attitude still influences expectations around maternity wear today. Rihanna's radical denouncement of traditional pregnancy fashions puts her bump centre stage. Critics have framed her choices as indecent and naked, with her belly often fully on show or peeking out beneath fringing or sheer fabrics. But Rihanna's choices celebrate bodily autonomy of women and the realities of pregnancy. As she told Vogue, quote, My body is doing incredible things right now, and I'm not going to be ashamed of that. This time should feel celebratory, because why should you be hiding your pregnancy? There's something rather joyous about Rihanna's radical pregnancy fashion choices. She shatters a lot of those Victorian notions of feminine decency and motherhood that society holds on to. Rihanna's pregnancy fashion is also not just for the expectant mother. Her maternity fashion is in many ways a feminist act that we can all clothe, display and experience our bodies however we see fit, no matter what they look like. Fashion is a huge part of how we express our identities and a transition to motherhood should not erase the person that we were before. So if you're expecting, why not step out of the modern maternity wear box and embrace something a little bit more historical? <laughs>